It is well known that composing orchestral music can be very taxing for our RAMs and our CPUs, and that's often the reason why composers tend to go for computer builds with last generation processors of infinite amounts of gigabytes of RAM, and in doing so, they spend thousands of dollars that they could actually save if they only learned how to optimize their DAW. Because yes, there are ways in which you can heavily reduce the amount of CPU and heavily reduce the amount of RAM used by your projects while keeping the projects the same without having to bounce everything like I did here. So I'm going to talk about those things today. Uh, the first thing being the PPQ. If you decrease this thing, you are going to heavily decrease the amount of CPU used by your project. So check out, for example, this project here. See, see my CPU cannot cope. It goes to 100% because it's too many tracks for this laptop. I'm not on my desktop, which is much, much more powerful. So in that desktop, I could read all the media without problems, but here I only have my laptop and it cannot cope. The first thing you do in these situations is sometimes you bounce your tracks to audio like this. And when you work with audio, it uses way less CPU instead of media. So now it's going to be readable. Although it still oscillates between 85% and 90% CPU use because all this audio is being processed through the reverb and isotopos and all those things. If I want to take this down a notch, I can reduce the time base. Check out what I do when you know, what happens. We had time base at 96, now it's 24. What this does is a few things, but first I want to show you the impact of working with less of a time base. Let's check out the CPU matter now. Before, it averaged around 88%. Now it's like 62, 68%. So we just saved 20% CPU usage by decreasing the time base. Now to explain to you what the time base does, I'm going to be very fast here. What it does is that pretty much the higher this parameter is, the further you're going to be able to zoom in your project file. This has an impact mostly on, like, on uh, automations, because say, for example, you're drawing an automation curve like, uh, like this. Right. If you have a higher time base from this dot to this other dot, you will have way more states, way more like your CPU will be way more will count or your project or read your project with way more precision. So that's why when you have a higher time base, it's way more CPU intensive because it, the CPU has way more states to read and to play back. Well, if we set this to 24, it's way less precise. But that's not necessarily a problem for orchestral music. So increases, decreasing the time base saves a lot of CPU. Another thing, of course, increasing the buffer of your um, audio card. Also here on FL Studio, there's this function called Smart Disable. It increases your CPU performance at the cost of, you know, making some plugin inactive until they reproduce sound. If you want to learn more about this, check out the FL Studio manual. What I just accomplished here was to reduce the CPU so much that now I can even read the MIDI data in real time without uh, having my computer go crazy. The alternative would have been to go back to Italy to get my desktop and ship it here to London or buy a whole new laptop for way more thousands of dollars that this costed me. So you see, I saved quite a lot of money and hassle just thanks to one setting. So that's, that's why I always advocate against going for big computers unless you know what you're doing. The other thing, the RAM. That's another subject very important that is very important to talk about. Because my songs get pretty huge. You might have seen it in this track. This is my Green Hills uh, Zone arrangement, which I have made a 40 minute tutorial on, by the way, if you want to learn how the arrangement works here, I'm going to leave it down below. But if you also see my Pirates of the Caribbean track, there's loads of instruments in there. So when people see arrangements with like 40 instruments or more, they're like, how is it possible for you to write these arrangements with only 16 gigabytes of RAM? And if you're asking yourself that question, you are probably unaware of the purge function and how contact works. So whenever I see comments on my YouTube about people asking me, hey, should I get 32 gigabytes of RAM? I always reply, no. Because if you're watching my tutorials, I, I suppose, I might be wrong, but I suppose you write music that is not at the same level as mine. And if you're not writing at that same level, you should consider that every single song I've published on YouTube used up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. I just reached the peak now with the Pirates of the Caribbean track and also Verge to Infinity. And this one gets to 15 gigabytes. Uh, so in this, like last summer, I bought 16 more gigabytes of RAM and I have 32 gigabytes on my desktop. 
in Italy. But here in London, I'm using my laptop and it only has 16 gigabytes, but I still get by thanks to the purge function. So to explain you what it is, I'm going to explain you a bit of how contact works in terms of RAM, CPU usage, and all those things. I mentioned this in another video as well. You might have watched it. If you haven't, you know, stay tuned for this explanation. Now, basically, let's use this patch as an example. This is the low strings patch from Metropolis Arc. And this is the one with the, all the, multi, the articulations in it. It's the multi-patch. And when you load this into RAM, when you open it, it takes 0.55 gigabytes. gigabytes. That's half a gigabyte of RAM for only one instrument. You know, this. So the question becomes, how are you able to open all these instruments like this? So I'm going to explain you what happens when you open a contact instrument. So you just, so you know what I'm talking about. Because basically I can tell you, just use the purge function and that's going to save you RAM, but I want to explain you why that is. So whenever you open a contact instrument like this, you are opening the instrument and the, the instrument is loading all the samples, all the audio of each note, of each articulation, of each dynamic level, all the notes contained in each, all the sounds contained in each note, it's loading it into the RAM of your computer. Because whenever you press one note, like I press this C note, which doesn't play. Uh, sorry about that. It's because of the smart disable function. Whenever I press this C note, I hear sound. Now, when you press this note, the pretty much what happens is that contact gets, like it takes that sample, the sound of that C from your RAM, which is a very fast memory storage in your computer. It sends that sample to your CPU, which processes it through your mixer, whatever, all the effects, and then it puts it into your audio card and your audio card puts it off, like the, the, uh, um, plays it back to you. So all of that has to, do, has to be done instantly. That's why it's ideal to go for RAMs that have DDR4, you know, and uh, 2300 megahertz or something like that. Like fast RAMs are better. If you have a slow RAM, all this process of taking the sample from the RAM and sending it to the CPU and everything is slower. It bottlenecks the whole process if you have a slow RAM. So, whenever you open a patch, all of the samples of each note of each articulation are loaded into the RAM so that whenever you play one note on this, whenever you change articulation, it's always responsive and it always, always replies with a note straight away. The thing is that, so this is the reason why the contact patches take like 50, you know, 500 megabytes to one gigabyte, even two gigabytes, because there's lots of samples in it. But the thing is that you're virtually not going to use all those samples. Like here for this, you know, basis patch, I think I'm only using just a few notes. So it doesn't make sense for me to use, to load all the notes, all the samples in the RAM. So what I will do is go here and do purge all samples or update sample pool. What happens when you purge or you update is that if you purge all the samples of this library are going to be deleted from the RAM. So you see now it's using zero megabyte of RAM. If I press one note though, like this A note, now the A sustain samples uh, have been loaded. So now it's taking one megabyte pretty much because those are all the A sustain samples. But it's only the, the samples in the A3 uh, and in the sustain patch, sustain articulation. So that's nothing compared to all the samples in all the notes, in all the articulations. All the so I do that for every single instrument here. You go here, you go global purge. And if you do update sample pool, what contact does is that it takes all the samples that have been played in the song and it keeps them and removes all else. In this manner, you pretty much don't stuff your RAM with samples you don't use in your project and you're never going to use that takes space for nothing. And this will save you an incredible amount of RAM, making it possible for you to open 40, 50, 60 instruments without reaching the peak of 16 gigabytes. That is often, like, that's, that's the reason why I strongly advocate, advocate against buying 32 gigabytes unless you're writing something that is using a whole freaking lot of instruments and is doing a whole freaking lot of articulation and notes with all of those instruments. If you're not doing that, don't freaking buy 32 gigabytes of RAM because you're wasting your money, which you could use for more productive things such as courses, private lessons, VSTs, like libraries, because the more libraries you have, the more freedom you have to compose. Usually it's like having a better arsenal of swords that can make you a better swordsman if you know how to use the swords. So save that money by optimizing your DAW, using the purge function and all those things, and use it for other things that can propel you further in terms of developing your musical career, your skills as a composer, your arsenal, everything.
Really don't underestimate because I see so many people buying hardware that is like that NASA would use. And then they don't invest in everything else. So they have this amazing machine, but they don't have the skills or the software to use in it. And that's very stupid, in my opinion. Don't do that. Now you know better. You know you can optimize. You know you can use the PPQ function, like the, the PPQ to increase this one to reduce the CPU usage. And you know you can increase your buffer on your driver. You know you can activate Smart Disable if you don't have a studio. You know you can bounce to audio if you're at a critical point. You know you can use the purge function to save your RAM. And I think there's also a function here somewhere which also increases or decreases the RAM slash CPU use, this thing here. I think if you set it to the max, it uses more RAM and less CPU. You set it to minimum, it does the opposite, I think. But uh, yeah, this PPQ trick was shown to me just a few weeks ago, and I feel very stupid uh, because of that, because that could have help, helped me save so much CPU in the, in the past, but I, somehow I didn't notice this. And uh, the guy who showed me this is called Nordic Dun. He's part of our Discord server where loads of composers share amazing tips and feedback for their songs and stuff like that. So if you want to join us on Discord, I highly recommend it. Down below for free. I'm going to leave the link there. Also, uh, Nordic Dun is part of my Patreon page, part of my Patreon supporters, who are the amazing people who make it possible for me to keep on making YouTube videos for you guys. So if you support me on Patreon, you're going to get rewarded with the stems, meaning the audio files of every instrument in every single one of my songs posted on YouTube. So if you're interested in that, check out the Patreon page. You can get my template as well here, but you can also get my template for free and my Thor The Dark World stems for free from my website. Links down below in the description. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. I wanted it to be a fast one. And I'm going to try to make another video again, a tutorial this Friday. So stay tuned, and I'm going to see you on Friday, maybe. Oh, also, share this video with Composer Friends. Bye.